Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. In this video, we're tackling the blues. So today we're going to be focused in on the blues and we're going to look at a few different guitar models that I think work really well for this genre. And we're going to talk about why that is and maybe why other guitars aren't quite as suited for the blues. So if you're a new player or if you're coming in from a different genre, hopefully you guys will find this helpful. Well, let's start things off with a bang. The first guitar to consider if you guys want to get into playing the blues is the undisputed blues champion, the Fender Stratocaster. More blues songs have been played, written, and recorded on the Stratocaster than all other guitars combined. And I think there's some very good reasons behind that. Let's jump in and check them out. One is that Stratocaster tone. There's really nothing else like it. This guitar came out in 1954 and featured a beefed up neck pickup over the previous Telecaster. Now, for all the Strat players out there, you know if you put your selector in the neck position, kick in a little bit of overdrive, and it becomes magical. There's just something about these low output single coil pickups that are absolutely suited to blues, to gospel, to soul, and to funk. You know, just that clarity that you get from a single coil pickup, the chime, the glassiness, and the fact that it retains dynamics even when you push it with overdrive. And I think that part is really key. It's the low output nature of Stratocaster pickups. And lots of blues players will take these pickups and lower them almost down to the pick guard so that, you know, the output is just very, very low. And it just gives that Strat its clarity and its chime uh, while keeping the dynamics, which is absolutely key. Now, of course, there's many other factors that make the Stratocaster so popular with blues players. Number one, the guitars have always been relatively inexpensive, especially compared up against, you know, equivalent Gibsons. So I think Fender, especially in the early days, uh, the ethos was to create simple guitars that were easy to fix. They were workhorse guitars. They were hard to break and relatively inexpensive. And if something did go wrong, you know, the entire electronics was just in one pick guard that you could remove easily service. The neck was a bolt on, which was very different from, you know, the early Gibsons, the early Gretches, uh, the early arch top jazz guitars that preceded all these solid body guitars coming on the market. So this guitar was very, very different. It was very ergonomic and of course, very thin, very comfortable to play even to this day with all the other, you know, models on the market. The Strat is still one of the lightest, you know, well-balanced, comfortable guitars to play. So you could play for hours on this guitar and not get fatigued. So I think those were some of the other factors. They were affordable, they were versatile, they were reliable, easy to fix, and just had that clean, chimey tone.
Stratocaster. I think the second most popular guitar for blues is the Semi Hollow Body. And if you're new to guitar, that simply means there's a block of wood that goes from the neck all the way down the middle of the guitar this way to the end on the inside. And that stabilizes the guitar and then you've got hollow body wings on either side. Now these guitars tend to have humbucking pickups arch tops and glue and neck joints. So much more refined and a little bit more complicated than, you know, the simplicity and rawness of the Strat, but it came with its own advantages and unique tones. Namely, as I mentioned, the humbucking pickups gave a fuller and thicker tone and they handled overdrive a little bit better, higher gain tones. Now I think it's important to mention if you are gonna look for, you know, a semi hollow body design to make sure you're getting low output pickups. As I mentioned with the strats, that's kind of the magic of playing the blues and getting good clean tones. If your pickups get too hot, your clean tones really, really suffer. So that's the main thing to note. If you get a design like this, look for super, super low output pickups, or even take your humbuckers and like I mentioned with the Strat pickups, just lower them down. And that really sweetens them up and you still get all that great dynamics. Now Gibson Semi Hollow Body Guitars were made really popular by guys like BB King, Otis Rush, Freddie King, and watching those guys play the blues on these kind of guitars really put them on the map and made that tone synonymous with the blues. Of course, we can't forget about the Gibson Les Paul and the Gibson SG. Now, of course, both of these models are more associated with rock playing than with blues, but as guys like Joe Bonamassa and Derek Trucks prove, some of the best, most incredible blues playing and blues tone can be found on these two models. Now, of course, you have to be even more careful to set up these guitars to play blues because when you're playing a Gibson solid body guitar, it's so easy to go a little bit too far with the gain. And before you know it, you're playing kind of classic rock kind of tones instead of blues tones, and you start to lose the magic of the dynamics that you need for blues. So again, if you have two hot pickups, you know, setting your amp differently, lowering the volume on your guitar, lowering the pickup height, there's a few different tricks to kind of get it and keep it in that sweet zone when you're playing the blues. So now for the don'ts. Now bear in mind, I'm a strong proponent of using what you have. I grew up with one really crappy guitar for years and I had to use it for all the styles I wanted to play. And I think a lot of people are like that. So, you know, the guitars I showed you are kind of like the iconic choices for blues. And if you're shopping for a guitar, I would definitely recommend one of those. That being said, you know, blues is about using what you have. It's not about, you know, finding the perfect rig or whatever. So bear that in mind. Uh, that being said, I think there are a few don'ts. Number one, I would personally avoid active pickups. I think they do have their own unique sound and they're kind of EQ'd in a certain way and I, I think it kind of works against what you want to do for blues. That's my personal choice and I would say the same probably for noiseless pickups although I'm not quite as strong that way. Uh, I think noiseless pickups uh, definitely can sound good, uh, but I personally would avoid active pickups and noiseless pickups. The other thing I would avoid for playing the blues is anything with like a Floyd Rose style bridge because I think it really does rob some of the sustain. And when you're playing with like compression and high gain and delay, and reverb, it doesn't matter if you lose a few seconds of, you know, sustain. So 
for that kind of style, Floyd Rose is, is perfectly suited. Uh, for blues, where you're not playing typically with a lot of compression, maybe just some amp compression, and you're playing with pretty low output or pretty low gain, you need all the sustain you can get. So I would probably avoid that kind of bridge. And the second uh, thing that I would avoid when you're playing the blues is like gain creep. <laughs> it always sort of sounds better if you just bump up that gain a little bit more. But again, for the blues, resist that, uh, especially when you're playing with humbuckers uh, and especially the solid bodies like the, the SG and the Les Paul. Uh, really, you know, take your gain down. Blues is just about that light breakup. And if you're playing some lead tones, you can get away with a little bit more gain. But if you're just trying to play some rhythms and stuff, uh, keeping humbuckers, especially like Les Pauls clean, is uh, a little bit of a challenge as you, as you come up in volume, those amps are gonna wanna break up. So resist putting too much gain on. Other than that, those are my don'ts. Now when it comes to amp settings, as I mentioned in my SRV tutorial, if you have like a Fender style amp, you're in a good place because that pretty much is the tone. Low output pickups, low output through a Fender amp. That's gonna get you some pretty amazing blues tone. Now when it comes to the EQ, give yourself lots of lows, lots of highs, and I usually cut the mids. That gives you that classic Fender tone. Now if you're gonna use a Les Paul, I'd probably cut more mids and maybe a little bit of the bass. If you're using a Strat, you don't have to cut as many mids. But that's a good starting point to get that classic blues tone. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Links to all the guitars, gear, t-shirts, tab store, all in the video description below. Feel free to check it out there. Other than that, have yourself a great day.